Imam uh, Ahmad, it is a must. It is one of the acts. Why? Because two reasons. One is because Al Quran separated the ghasl and masah, right? Um, or in other words, Al Quran talked about masah between three ghasl, right? So wash your face, wash your hand, wipe your head, and then wash your feet. So Quran could have talked about washing and then masah or, or otherwise. But the point here is that this order is intended in the ayah, although it's not directly said, keep the order, but it's understood from the context. And also the practice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are the six acts, uh, obligatory acts of wudu uh, that we uh, should not miss. And uh, today, inshallah, we'll talk about the uh, n uh, nafl act or the sunnah act, things that we should do but if you don't do, you will not, still your wudu is valid, but of course uh, you would miss uh, uh, the reward of these things. The first act of the uh, Sunan act of al wudu is tasmiyah. Say bismillah. Although there is no authentic hadith that relates tasmiyah before the wudu of the Prophet, وسلم, some hadith are, were mentioned there, um, none of them is very authentic, but you know, when you combine all these hadith together, in addition to the fact that saying Bismillah before you do anything anyway, is 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 highly recommended, right? So Tasmiyah therefore is one of the Sunan of Al Wudu. The second Sunnah is um, brushing our teeth. The Prophet ﷺ used to do this when he makes Wudu. He used the Siwak, right? And he said in the authentic hadith. If it was not difficult on my ummah, I would have ordered them to make suwak or to use suwak or to brush their teeth every time they do wudu. Right? So, but it would have been difficult, right? Uh, so, in other words, it's, I, it's just close from being fard. It's highly recommended because wudu is about purification and cleanness, especially when we come and pray in jama'ah. We mention the name of Allah, the angels are there, so it's always good to keep our mouth clean. And if you look at the Sunan of Rasulullah, you will find out that he used to use a siwak in particular occasions. At the time of wudu, before salah, um, when he wakes up in the morning, and after food. And they used to say that also after when his mouth changed, when, you know, when, when your mouth changed for one reason or the other. And one of the Sahaba said, I saw the Prophet وسلم, on um, countless occasions that he uses his siwak while fasting. So even when you are fasting, actually it's, it's more recommended to use it while we're fasting because it's more likely, right, uh, that the smell of the mouth is not um, uh, very pleasant. So Aisha radiallahu anha also narrated that the Prophet وسلم, used to use the siwak and give it to me to wash it for him. So she used it first. And then she washed it and then gave it back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So using siwak, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about it, it uh, about siwak, it is matharatun uh, lilfam, mardatun lirab. Two simple sentences, beautiful. As siwaku, matharatun lilfam, matharah, come from tahara, matharah. It's called isma ala, maf'ala. Um, Siwaku matharatun lil fam, it washes the mouth, and wa mardatun mardatun lil rab, it's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah likes to see us using, or brushing our teeth. Allah likes this, right? To keep ourselves clean, especially when we read Quran, when we um, uh, make wudu, when we start, uh, or before we start our salah, when we wake up. And Aisha also narrated radiallahu anha that the first thing Rasulullah would do when he comes in the house is to use the siwak. Isn't it very nice for a, a man to come and see his family and the first thing he does is just make sure that he brushes his teeth and to keep his mouth clean. Right? So, siwaku matharatun lil fam mardatun lil rab. Just a quick comment on this hadith if it was not difficult for my ummah I would have ordered them to um, use siwak uh, every time they perform wudu 
the ulama talked, uh, ulama al-usul talked about uh, something called tafweed. In other words, there are commands coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa conveys it. And the Prophet was also given the authority to make laws. It's called tafweed. So there is command from Allah that he says Allah t- told you to do this and that. And there's ijtihad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sometimes he makes his own ijtihad. And inclu- that this ijtihad includes what's known as tafweed. Tafweed means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the authority to legislate what he think is good because he is the best of all human he is the most wise وسلم, so if he makes a law and the Quran did not say anything or the Wahy did not say anything that he is using this authority to make laws if it was not difficult I would have made it so on so it's, in other words it's as if that the Prophet was just about to make it one of the fara'id of, of wudu but he did not وسلم, because he was afraid that it would have been difficult for, for people to, to keep. There are a number of other occasions, um, uh, but there's no um, time now to talk about them. So, using, uh, t- saying tasmiyah and using siwak, and of course, uh, no, you don't have to have this uh, uh, natural uh, uh, toothbrush. You can use anything that keeps your mouth clean. So if you have a brush and you brush your teeth at the time, of wudu before or right after, that will be sufficient. If you want to add toothpaste, toothpaste that will be even better to keep your mouth clean, right? What if you don't have anything? According to Imam Malik, use even your finger. Do it just this with your finger to make sure that um, um, it, it is as clean as possible. <coughs> Number three, washing the hands three times at the beginning. Uh, keep in mind, in the old days, they don't have running water like we have now. So they used to have a container or something that they, they put their hand in or someone pour the water to help the person to make wudu. So, but it is always sunnah to wash your hand three times uh, before you start your wudu. Why? For a very simple reason. that uh, You just want to uh, make sure that your hand is clean because you are going to use your hand to wash your face and your, your, your hand and your feet and so on. And this is especially um, um, if this is the first wudu in the morning. And Rasulullah said, don't put your hand in the container for wudu unless you wash it outside of the container first. Why? He said, because you don't know where was your hand while you are asleep. While you are asleep, your hand can go anywhere, right? So just for the sake of maintaining the hygienic uh, Safety, it's always good to wash your hand first before you make wudu and use this hand to put the water in your mouth and your nose and your face and so on. Right? So, washing our hands three times. Now, do we have to do it three times if you are using um, running water coming from the faucet? How, how would you count three times? Right? It doesn't have to be three times, but just wash it first until you make sure that your hand is clean. If you are coming out of the bathroom and use the soap, it will be even better because the purpose is to clean your hand that will clean then your face and, and, and your mouth and so on, right? <coughs> All right, after this is the rinsing the mouth three times, called madmada. Madmada, just put the water in the mouth and uh, spit it out. And this is called madmada, uh, rinsing the mouth. Um, three times. Three times is also sunnah. If you do it one time, we'll talk about this. One time is sufficient, but three times is, is better. And then sniffing up and blowing out water from our nose. Um, uh, this is uh, something that we can do it in, in two different ways. One way is to just do madmada three times, right? To spit the, wash your mouth and spit the water three times, and then um, uh, sniff in the water and blow it out three times or we can do this too with one handful of water and this is actually what the Rasulullah used to do right so with one handful of water he put some water in his mouth and the other into his nose and he used his left hand to clean his nose right is it clear easy and simple just get the water get some water in the mouth for mud mother 
and the other part in inside the nose. You don't have to sniff it all the way down, it's not, of course, obviously. Um, so you can do this uh, at once, or you can separate them if, 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 you, if you want, but it is, uh, it's better to do it the way um, the hadith um, described the wudu of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadith, also other another hadith, he said, "You should even exaggerate in in doing this, you know, sniffing water and and and, and blow it out. Do this, and of course, especially in the time of allergy and all these things, it's always good to clean the inside of the mouth, unless you are fasting. If you are fasting, be careful, right?" Uh, it's all, uh, also sunnah to uh, run the water between your fingers and your toes. Make sure that when you make wudu, that the water goes between the fingers, right? And between the toes. Sometimes we do a fast wudu and we just pay more attention to the ankles, just cover the ankles, but between the toes are not well covered or could be dry still. So make sure that you uh, let, make sure that the water runs through your fingers and your, your toes. Do you have to move the ring? If you have a ring, do you have to move the ring to make sure that the water goes underneath the ring? Um, there's no hadith that says that, but the ulama said it's, it's good to do so because this is part of isbaq al just to make sure that the water um, touch every uh, part, uh, the whole skin, right? <coughs> also repeating each washing three times. Uh, we have been told when we were young that you have to do it three times. But we don't have to do it three times. Rasulullah did it most of the time, he did it three times, but sometimes he did it one time only. Other times he did it two times just to show the permissibility of doing it one time or two times. But most of the time, he وسلم, used to do it three times, like washing the face three times, and um, his hands and his feet three times. How about wiping on the head? A number of narrations, the strongest ones, uh, is the one that suggests that he used to wipe on his head only one time. So it is sunnah to wipe on the head one time. But if you see someone doing it two or three, there are no, some hadith, uh, but the hadith that um, reported wiping the head one time are, are stronger. <coughs> it's also sunnah to begin with the right side. Um, it's not far, but it's sunnah to start. As Rasulullah sallam usually, according to a number of hadith, كَانَ يُحِبُّ التَّيَامٌ فِي أَمْرِهِ كُلِّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. He likes to always start with the right. Right? So, um, start with the right hand, then the left, then the right uh, foot, and then the left foot. <coughs> Now, rubbing the limbs with water. Last time we, we said that, according to Amalek, this, this is obligatory, that you have to rub you know, your limbs with, with your hand, right? Uh, but according to the majority of the scholars, this is not obligatory. It is recommended. Again, the main goal of wudu is to make sure that water... But if someone just put water on his hand without rubbing his hand with the other hand, According to the majority of the ulama, it is, that would be sufficient. But it's always sunnah to do what Rasulullah sallam did. Um, and also close uh, the sequence. Don't leave a, a huge gap between. Uh, and this mu'ala, again, according to Imam Malik, is a must. Uh, that's, why, that's why we'll do in Imam Malik's madhab are seven, right? So seven uh, arkan, seven obligatory acts. So he considered this sequence, or, or, or closing the, the, the sequence, or closing the gap between washing one limb to the other. Um, how can we measure this? Again, the ulama said, if the last limb that you washed dried up, then this is a sign that you waited for too long, right? 
Um, but again, this, is, this measure, this uh, standard is not mentioned in any hadith, but we have to use our common sense to differentiate between what's long and what's short. <coughs> uh, wipe, uh, wiping the ears. And um, we mentioned this before, that Rasulullah used to wipe, uh, to wipe his ears using the index and his thumb. The index to clean the inside the ear and the thumb to wash the outside of the ear. So the inside like this and the outside like this. Um, also, it is sunnah to um, uh, along the streaks of light, as they call it, or al ghurra wa tahjil. We mentioned in the be very beginning the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that um, he will recognize his ummah because their face and their hands and their feet will shine in the day of judgment as a result of making wudu. So, if you want to increase this, do so. In other words, if you can wash your hands. This is the obligatory part that you have to wash up to this elbow, but if you want to make it longer, that would be even better. And similarly, if you want to wash your feet above the ankle, that will be even better. So all this area will come shining in the day of judgment. So italat al ghurra wa tahjil. Is there any particular supplication or prayer or dua we do um, during uh, wudu? Um, there are a number of, of uh, narrations that uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to make some duas, but none of them is authentic. However, the most authentic one is um, the one that has been narrated here. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, um, while he's performing wudu, one of the Sahaba said, I heard him supplicating. Allah ma'fil li dhambi wa wasi'a li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi O Allah forgive my sins make my residence spacious for me and bless me in my provisions Ilfil li dhambi is asking for the good of dunya and akhirah provide me a spacious place or expand my residence you know to have a large place is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he's asking Allah, Allah ma'afil li dhambi wa wasi' li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi. Asking for blessings for whatever provision Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And when this sahabi asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, did I leave anything out? Or did this dua leave anything out? In other words, that is a comprehensive dua that includes so many things. Um, as for the dua after the wudu, um, uh, there is a, a hadith uh, in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, whoever says after his wudu, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, the eight gates of paradise will open up for him. And he may enter any of them that he wishes. And this hadith uh, is um, uh, related by a Muslim, an authentic hadith. Very simple thing, shahada, just say shahada, right? After you have the niyyah, do the six obligatory um, acts of, of, of wudu, make isbaag wudu, perfect your wudu, and then after you're done, just say, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasooluh. This will open the eight gates of Jannah for you, so you may enter from anyone you wish. <coughs> it is sunnah also, it is recommended um, to pray to raka um, as nafl after your wudu. Uh, we, we don't have to pray after each wudu. Sometimes we, we, we make wudu not necessary to pray. We make wudu, for example, as we will mention also, uh, that we make wudu because it's sunnah or it's better always to, to be in a state of wudu. We make wudu before we sleep. So you don't have to pray. You just use the bathroom, make wudu, and go and sleep in a state of tahara, right? 
But uh, Rasulullah said to Bilal, Yeah, Bilal, what do you do? I've heard your footsteps behind me in Jannah. You know, what, what, what do you do? What makes you um, that close from me? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I, I don't do anything significant except that um, every time I lose my wudu, I renew my wudu, and then I pray um, uh, as lo- you know, as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me. So in other words, every time he makes wudu, oh sorry, every time he loses wudu, he makes a new wudu. And every time he makes a new wudu, he offer two or four or more uh, rakah. So that, that's, that's like his habit. Um, Rasulullah mm-hmm. did not order people to pray to rakah after wudu. But and some they call this salah sunnatul wudu. Sunnatul wudu. Yani if, if you make wudu, um, just pray two rakahs because we cannot pray without wudu. But we can make wudu without praying, right? So it's always good to pray two rakah after this uh, wudu. <coughs> All right, I will stop here, inshallah, and if you have any questions before we uh, go forward, um, just don't uh, you know, lose um, concentration. So, you have a question here? Okay. Okay. You have to do wadu first, only first time. Uh huh. Wash your feet too. After that, you can do masa rest of Right. Right. So you have to have done the first. Right, you right, to, right. You have to do wadu complete. Not Fajr time necessarily. Huh? Not necessarily Fajr time. You said Fajr time? Yeah, you said. It doesn't have to be Fajr time. Whatever. First time. <laughs> no, let's put it this way. You have to put your socks in the state of wudu in order to be able to wipe on it. Or you cannot wipe on your socks unless you put it on the state of wudu. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said when the uh, Sahabi Abu Musa um, al-Mughir ibn Shu'ba he went to take the... He was making wudu, uh, yani helping the Prophet making wudu. So he went to take off his uh, khuf and said, no, keep it. I put it in tahara. So this is the condition. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to do first uh, put yes. and after that you can do Right. Right. So we talked about the conditions of mas'h. One is to put it in wudu. So if you don't have wudu and you wear your socks, then you cannot wipe on it. But now what if you did the opposite? You have wudu and you put your socks on and then you lost your wudu and you went to make masah. And you did masah, right? So now you are, your wudu is complete. What if you took off your socks? What should you do? We didn't talk about this last time, right? Did we? We did not. So. There are a number of opinions here. Uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmahullah, and Imam al Shafi'i, they said that you must wash your feet, only your feet. So let's say that you lost your wudu and then you wiped on your socks for dhuhr, for example, right? To pray dhuhr. And then after Salat al dhuhr, you take it off. Right? Now, you have to new a new wudu or just wash your feet? Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i said, no, you just need to wash your feet. Right. Imam Malik said, yes, you have, you have to wash your feet also, but you have to wash it right after you take it off. So if you took it off and after one hour you want to pray, washing the feet will, be not, will not be sufficient. You can take it off and wash it right away. Otherwise, because his mu'ala, the, the sequence for him is a, is a wajib, is, is for Imam Malik. So, so, but in general, these three madahib, they agree that you have to wash your feet, right? But the difference is that Abu Hanifa and Shafi said you can wash your feet anytime. Uh, Imam Malik said this has to be done right after you take it off, right? The third opinion is that you don't have to do anything. You have wudu. Yeah, we took it off, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Imam Ibn Hazm and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, they said this is the right opinion. You don't have to wash your feet. Why do you have to wash your feet? You don't have to wash your feet. Your wudu is complete and done. And they actually um, 
relied on a hadith on uh, Imam Ali radiallahu anhu and Abi, there are two hadith actually hadith of Abu Bakr and hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu hadith Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu uh, the one who narrated the hadith said I saw Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu he, he urinated while standing this is the exact narration and then he wiped on his socks he middle and wiped on his khuf and then he took it off and he led people in salah hadith in Bayhaqi Al Imam Al Albani actually said the narration this hadith is very authentic so he said this hadith is authentic ala short al shaykhai so therefore Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and Imam Ibn Hazm when they read the whole opinions they said this is the strongest opinion because this is what Ali ibn Abi Talib did and this is what the analogy also suggests what's the analogy here the analogy is what if you have and this happened in the time of Umar and Hajj you made wudu and you wiped on your head and then you shaved your head so do you have to make another wudu or 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 not no you don't have to make another wudu because your wudu is complete خلاص. whether you shave or don't shave your wudu is complete and they said similarly if you wipe on your socks then your wudu is complete and then you took off your socks then you still can pray you don't have to make a new wudu or even wash your feet all right this point clear all right um yes so none of the madahib actually say that you actually have to make the wudu uh, remake the wudu uh, only Mab, uh, imam uh, malik who said if you make it lo long period of time yeah no some other other opinions actually suggest that you have to make the entire wudu all, all once you take it off خلاص, your wudu is gone but the other Ibn Taymiyyah and others said no where you get this from this is not from Nawaqid al-wudu none of the ulama said that if you take off your socks then your wudu is over because Nawaqid al-wudu what breaks your wudu none of them is taking off your socks or your your hoof but you actually sorry but you fabricated your wudu so if you make wudu and then you wear your socks and then say you use the bathroom mm -hmm. and then you went back to make wudu and then you made mess mm -hmm. so you're just so i understand so you can take your socks off yes you can this will not affect your wudu according to what imam ali ibn talib did in an authentic hadith and the imam ibn taymiyyah and ibn hazm and again, based on the analogy, so you have you have number of, of, of evidence here. The act of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, the analogy of wiping on your head and then shaving, <laughs> and the logic. You know, what, again, once you made the mas, khalas, your wudu is complete. None of the ulama, none of the ulama said that if you do uh, mas, and then you take the socks off, then your wudu is is nullified. The imam, the imam Abu Hanif and Mike, they said wash your feet but washing the, your feet is not a wudu <laughs> you see my point so they said therefore why, why even washing his feet you don't have to all right yes the ne as for the neck there's no one single authentic hadith that says that Prophet did so However, some, especially in Hanafi, by the way, they considered the hadith that says the Prophet ﷺ, they described how he wiped his head. They said he wiped his head from the beginning all the way to his neck. So the question is, does this include the neck or does not, or, or means up to the neck, which means the end of the hair? Uh, they said, you know, it's mustahab because of this hadith. See, they, they're under, uh, in Hanafi, they said, uh, what we understand from this, it is mustahab to even go all the way down, not only to the end of your hair. Include the neck. But there's no one single hadith, either, as I said, uh, and even some said it's makru, it's, it's bid'ah, you are adding something that's not a fudu. Others said, no, well, it's, it, this can mean that he wiped all the way to his neck right so maybe he included it and others said well it's, it's extra cleanness it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it especially in the hot weather when you really make wudu you really want to take a shower you know and include this to keep yourself cool but is it part 
Is it fard? No, of course not. Is it sunnah? The majority said no, it's not part of the sunnah. It's not like, like washing your, 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 wiping your ears. This, there are many hadiths said the Prophet used to do this, right? But for the neck, again, there's no single authentic hadith that makes it even sunnah or make it mustahab, yani, recommend it. Okay? Naam. No. No. No, no, that's all. Question about the nail polish. So let's say somebody needs some nail polish. The nail polish. The nail polish, obviously, uh, if the w anything, not only the nail polish, anything that, that prevent the water from touching your body, then obviously that goes against wu. Um, so, for those who want to use it, either use, well, I, I'm not an expert in this area, something that does not prevent the water from coming, if there's any. If not, then they have to manage their wudu accordingly. Um, because um, any, it's, uh, for some the, the, the painters, pe people like go and paint houses or buildings, and he's working, and his body in the summer is full of painting. And this building gets like sticks in his body. So when he goes to make wudu, he just needs to make sure that he removes it. So in order for the water to, to come in. Right? Naam. Two situations. One is when a salah is about to begin and you want to join the salah. Mm. And you're not on your wudu. Just a six public treat uh, a khan that you do for the wudu. Is that good enough? Yes. Or at the night time when you want to go to bed and you just do the six part, is that good? Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's why we, we started first with the obligatory acts. Why? Just to tell you this, if you do these six, six things, your wudu is, is good. You can pray, you can do anything. But it's always good to learn the sunnah. Yes, so if you are, like sometimes you are traveling, you have just very small amount of water. That would be sufficient only for washing the face and washing the hands early enough and, and the feet. That, that's good enough. And have the niyyah and keep this order. Mas'hal al ras No, it's, it's a must. Mas'hal al ras is... No, no, I, okay. So, so I'm, I'm just giving an example of, of the six that you have. So the niyyah, face, hands, head, feet, order. Plus. Sometimes in some situations you would need this because you don't have enough water or yes, airplane, airplane, you know, it's just <laughs> doing these so six things. Sir? You don't have to make the, the mouth or the nose or you don't have to do it three times. One time is enough. One time on your face, one time on the hand, one time on the feet. That's good enough. So that's a good question that comes to my mind about in the airplane when you're traveling, we can't wash our feet. It's just not practical over there. Wipe on your socks. Right. You have three days. You have three days. Islam is easy. Yeah. Allah said Allah does not intend to put any haraj on you. And this ayah, by the way, came in the same ayah of wudu. Because the Sahaba were coming back from the battle. And Aisha was in the army. And they were very close from Medina. And this is the last rest before they enter Medina. And you can imagine people traveling in all days, days and nights. And khalas, Medina is very close. So they stop to pray. And khalas, the next stop will be inside Medina. And it was Maghrib time. And Aisha lost his necklace. And she was crying. This is very important for her. And the Prophet Sallallahu people are tired and start losing water. Khalas, they're at the end of the trip. And they want to go back to their families and to eat hot meals and wash <laughs> them. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Khalas, we're going to stay here tonight. What? Stay here tonight for what? Because Aisha lost her necklace and we have to wait until morning because it's dark. And people went to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, see what your daughter did to us. 
And Abu Bakr again screaming at his daughter. Aisha, what did you do? Don't you care about people? And the Prophet told, told them just and they wait until morning. But Fajr time, there's no water. Khalas. All water is gone. What should we do now? And the ayat, this ayat in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And the people went to thank Abu Bakr after this. How great is your blessing, the blessings that you brought to this ummah. It's because of you, family of Abu Bakr. So they were <laughs> angry at her at night, but in the morning, they understood there's a good reason. But look at Rasulullah, he ordered the entire army to stay one extra night. And he himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is. Because his wife lost something that's dear to her. So the whole army stays overnight. In the morning, they found this necklace. It was under the, her camel. <laughs> but they couldn't find it at night. So, so the ayah came, ما يريد الله ليجعلكم في الدين من And this haraj, there is haraj, أخي. We are traveling in the airplane. How can you make wudu there? Just wipe your socks. What? Plenty of hadith and, and, and Sahaba did, did, did so. So. Okay, let me understand one thing. Mm -hmm. Woke up, I did make wadu, did fajr. I don't wear socks in the house. Mm -hmm. So you do fajr, mm -hmm. then you get dressed, then you wear socks. Mm -hmm. Now come to Zohar. Do I have to do masa or do you have to be, I have to take sha? Socks off and wash No, because you put it in the morning on wudu. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's so not right after. Uh, okay, but you had the wudu when you put the socks on that. Before. Yeah, the whole idea is not to, you don't have to put it right after wudu. Who said that? You made wudu. <laughs> Let me give you an extreme example. You made wudu at 6 a.m. and you left your house at 11 a.m. and you still have your wudu. You put your socks at 11 p.m. Five minutes after, you can wipe on your socks. The, the idea is to put your socks while you are in wudu. That's it. And then you should, you can count 24 hours. After the first mas, not after, don't count from the time you put it on. You count from the first mas. So if you have to do mas at dhuhr, then you have up until the dhuhr of next day. You can do Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr, but you have to wash it before the next Dhuhr. If you, in the winter time, the day is short, so you make wudu in the morning, and you can keep this wudu until Maghrib. And you have to wipe on the socks at Maghrib. Then you have up until Asr of next day. See, see you have 24 hours. Right? Now. Or do, uh, well, um, according to Imam um, uh, Shafi'i, Imam uh, Malik, and Imam Ahmad, yes, you have to keep this order. It is, it is a fard. If you play with the order, this wudu is not valid. Uh, the only Imam who said that the order is, you, your wudu is still valid, even if you miss with the orders intentionally. Is Imam Abu Hanifa. But of course, he also said that you will miss the reward of following the Sunnah. But your wudu will be okay. Now. You mentioned about the uh, nail polish uh, uh, covering linen. Now that applies to like a uh, first aid band aid. Uh, if you wear the band aid after uh, when you are in the state of wudu. And now. Uh, don't have even. Don't have to. Anything, any pan bandage or, or anything that you put for health reason, you don't have to wash. You don't have to take it off. So let's say you, uh, you have uh, what's called cast on your, your, your hand. Okay, so half of your arm is covered and the other half is. So the half that's not covered, then you wash as much as you can. The other half, just wipe on it. Get your hand, you know, just wet and just wipe on it. That's all. Okay. But for health reason, it's, it gets even much easier. So if you put this bandage, you don't have to put it in the state of wudu. You put it for a good reason. 
That, that's an exception. Mm. Then mind. you can you can pray, yeah. And uh, so the so when I lost my voodoo, you have to remove it. I have to remove yes, it. yes. You have to remove it. Right. No, th th that, that's a wrong analogy, um, because this actually was made to remove hardship from people. This the real hardship in people in, in washing their feet in the workplace, in the airport, in the airplane, and in these things, and the cold weather. So just so so this was made for something that's really difficult, but nail polishing is is not does is not that. You know, you will not die if you don't do it, or if you, it, it, there's no hardship. You, you, see, you see my point? And Muslim women should only put this in their, their homes, right? Or if they are going to a place where there are women only. That, that's that's what, what we know, uh, you know. All these things should not be applied when you go in public. So if you want to go to a party or a wedding where only women there, and you want to put it, put it then make sure that you have a strong wudu. You can keep this wudu until the party is over. Then you go home, take it off, make wudu for Aisha or tip. Just make some arrangements, yani. But it's not a good excuse that you're not making wudu or not praying because simply I, I put this uh, nail polish. I mean, it's no, but I know also there are plenty of liquids that can easily Remove it. I mean, it's not a. It's not that difficult thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it, uh, as I said, if water cannot reach your skin, then you have to remove it. But if it does not affect this, halas. Yeah, you can sue your company. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Um, another thing also uh, regarding the shoes, uh, one brother asked me here a question and I didn't know the answer at that time w when he said that if you are wearing um, your shoes without the socks, right? So the ulama said in this case, um, if you are wearing a shoes without the socks, then these shoes must cover the whole area of wudu that should cover your ankle, right? It, it does not cover the entire ankle, then, then you cannot wipe on it. But what if you wear um, socks and then shoes, and you already wiped on the socks? Can you put the shoes on and pray with the shoes? Yes, because the shoes is clean, right? So and you wipe on your socks, then you can pray. Even if you can wipe on these shoes, in this case, if you put your socks, these socks underneath, you have socks and shoes. And the shoes does not cover the, the whole thing, but the socks does, right? And you put the socks in a set of wudu, right? Then you can do mas on the shoes. You don't have to do this mas on the socks. But you have to pray with these shoes. So if your intention is to pray with the shoes, then you don't have to take the shoes off and wipe on your socks and put the shoes on again. You can wipe on the shoes um, and pray with these shoes. But if you plan to pray with the socks, then you have to wipe on the socks. You cannot wipe on the shoes and then take it off and, and pray with them. Usually, uh, what I found interesting is that, uh, and this shows you how things vary from one place to the other, or, or the, the customs, of, um, that they always, or some, some fuqaha said that you can wipe on the socks only if you are going to wear shoes. So um, this is just one opinion that because they said because the socks or the jawarib does not stand around your feet on their own. So the socks at that time is not, does not have any elastic uh, material that keep it tight to your, to your shoes like this. You can imagine, you know. It's, it's, so they put something to keep their uh, feet warm and then they put the shoes on 
And this is called Jawrab or Jawarib. Hadith uh, Abu Musa Ash'ari, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Masah ala, ala Jawrabain wa Na'alain. He wiped on the Jawarib, the socks, and Na'al. Na'al is the shoes. So they said that you can only wipe on the Jawarib and the shoes because the shoes keeps the socks in place. <laughs> All right? Um, and those who said it has to be leather said because the leather stand with, with no need for anything else to tie it to your shoes. But now our socks perfectly fits in, you know, good to go. And this tells you that the, the, the definition of a socks for them is different from, from it we have now, right? Yes? Say it again, say it again. When because this is what it is. You have so many conditions, because water, uh, uh, the wudu actually is called ibadah ma'iyya. It has to do with water, right? If you don't have water, then use tamu. If you don't have tamu, uh, uh, dirt or sand, you don't have to do anything. Just pray. So the general ruling here is that when, when there is mashaqqa, when there is hardship, then taysir comes in, easiness comes in. Right? But if you don't have any mashaqqa, then you have to do it. Fasting Ramadan is difficult. Isn't it? Right? But especially for traveling, if you're, you are sick, there's a good reason for you not to fast. Okay, you don't have to fast. But if you are healthy, you are not traveling, still difficult, the day is long, it's hot, why do you have to fast? Do I have to get sick? Yes, you have to get sick. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to fast. You don't want to fast? Don't fast. Up to you. But so if you have water, then you have to do this. If you don't have water, خلاص, just use much sim simpler thing, right? Even, even if you have water, but it's very cold. Amr ibn Asa, yeah. He was the leading the small army. And um, one night he uh, became Junub and he has to lead the Fajr Salah. He was just... He was the leader, and, and he leads. He's the imam also of the army. And he was Junub. And he did tambum. He put his hand on the, on the, on the sand, and he wiped on his face and on his hand. Aqib salah and then... <laughs> and people said, what kind of salah is this? The guy is Junub. He did not take a shower. And the whole army was like, people were not happy with this. They went back to Rasulullah. Yeah, Rasulullah, this is what happened. And then he called Amr. Amr, did you lead... Uh, people, Salah, or Junub, is it true? He said, Ya Rasulullah, didn't Allah say, don't kill yourself? <laughs> Rasulullah said, yes. He said, it was too cold. <laughs> and I thought at that time, if I took shower with this cold water, I would have died. And the Prophet laughed. He said, we, we saw his teeth. You know, his <laughs> and he approved this ijtihad. That's ijtihad of Amr. You know, it's, it's too cold. Allah did not say, if the water is cold, Make tamum. He said, if you don't find water, that, isn't it interesting? Allah said, if you don't find water, make tamum. So what if there's water, but it's too cold? Or um, it's not safe to go and get water and come back. There's civil war there. Or you are so sick, you are so tired, you cannot really go to the bathroom. You are sitting in the ICU. Yes, you are awake and everything you talk, but you are connected with so many tubes and, and things, you cannot really make wudu. Allah said, you don't make wudu. You are healthy, you are good, make wudu. So you have so many conditions because it's easy for you to fulfill these conditions. If you cannot fulfill it, we'll give you another alternative. All right? No, 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 no. Tayammum, we'll talk about tayammum later, but tayammum, just one hit, on the ground, do like this and like this, khalas. Some even people said, you know, we have to do it up to the elbow, that's not correct. And said two, no, just one head like this, that's khalas. It's, it's very symbolic. Uh, it's, it's, you don't really clean yourself with this, but uh, it's just to prepare yourself for, 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 for the salah, right? 
Other question? I see a hand here. Someone raise his hand here. Wabarikli fi rizqi. All right, we'll stop here. Let's. I don't. I couldn't hear you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does not, but you have to remove this because it's considered najasa. So if you have wudu and najasa came in your body, in your clothes, you don't have to make a new wudu. You just need to wash and remove this najasa. That's all. Even yes, even in the clothes. So if something came on your clothes, then you, you wash it, but you still have wudu. So removing the najasa from the body, from the place where you pray is one thing, and losing your wudu is something else that we'll talk about next time, inshallah. All right? And we have a question here. Do you have to take off the hijab, or we can um, wipe on it, right? Now you take it off. I have to check this. Um, there are a number of opinions, and people say about the hijab. Uh, it it, it uh, applies, you know, women can wipe on their hijab, and Rasulullah Sallallahu used to wipe on his amama. So Rasulullah Sallallahu used to wipe on his amama, the entire amama. I mean, and sometimes part of his head and part of his turban. So uh, he does not take off the turban; rather, he wipes on his amama. That's an authentic hadith. So for the sisters, um, yes, they can wipe on their on their hijab. Don't have to take it off, according to some opinions. Other opinions suggested that uh, they ha they can wipe not the entire head but just the front part of the head, as it is according to Imam Shafi. If they just put their fingers under the hijab to wipe part of their head, that will be sufficient because Allah said, "Msahu biruusikum," and Imam Shafi said, "Any part of your head." will be sufficient. Imam Abu Hanifa said one quarter of the head, others said the whole head. So they either can wipe on the hijab or again they can wipe only the front part of, of their heads. But I will check also inshallah to see if there's other um, uh, yani stronger uh, argument for this. Any question? Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين